important about making your bed. If you want to have a beautiful bedroom, you need to start with a thing that takes center stage in your room, and that's the bed. On average, how many times a week do you make your bed? Stop the video now and leave me a comment. Today, I'm going to show you how to get, essentially, three different bed looks. I'll be using one full set of bedding and extra pillows. We won't be offering this one as one of the options. And just a comforter isn't going to cut it either. We're using the Villa Home Collection by Classic Concepts. Cindy and I visited their showroom in Las Vegas Market and we were really impressed with it. These are brand new, so I'm going to fluff and get rid of the excess creases by putting them in the dryer. Give me a game right now, Mom. It's your fault because I went looking for you. Mm -hmm. That quick second, that wasn't a quick second. <laughs> One thing I like to do is cut off all the unnecessary tags that are stitched into the seams. Despite the scare tactics on the warning labels, I can assure you the lady with a candy cane vest will not come and take you away. First, you gotta put on your mattress cover, and we all know how fun that can be. If you can get a friend or a camera guy to help you out, I'd highly recommend it. Next, we're gonna put on the fitted sheet. Again, your cameraman. What I'm showing you here is making a bed with all of your traditional bedding elements. These are our sheets, and we'll get into your coverlet, duvet cover, and pillows next. But first, let's make sure we get our flat sheet right. I try and even out my sheet on either side of the bed, tucking it in securely at the foot. Much like wrapping a present, I take my top corner, extend it all the way out, and run it up towards the headboard. You'll want to tuck the excess fabric under the mattress to secure the fold. Did you know the first video I ever made was on wrapping a present? Mm -hmm. And when you do, voila, no tape is seen. Back to the bed. Make the same improvements on the other side. If you don't have a bed with a frame, this fabric will tuck in between your mattress and box springs just as well. Put on your coverlet and tuck it in in the same manner. We'll fold this the same way we did the sheet. After tucked and straightened, you'll want to pull back the sheet along with the coverlet about a third of the way down. The sheet will naturally extend further, which is fine because the next step is to take the excess and fold it towards the headboard. This adds nice layers as it is, but I'm going to take you one step further and bring that blanket up for a final fold. What a great finished look. We can now add our sleeping pillows and get those looking orderly. Then we'll move on to the quilt, which I fold in half and place evenly over the lower half of the bed. I'll double it back and stop just before the edge of the mattress, making for a great tailored look. After that, we add two fun pillows that are in our color scheme, and there you have it, a well-made, not-too-fussy bed. On to option two. For this option, we're going to unfold our quilt and bring it up towards the head of the bed, stopping a quarter of the way from the top. Make a fold, and now use that coverlet to go over the top. That has a nice, clean look. We're bringing our flat sheet to the top, and now we can start placing our pillows. I think this is looking pretty sharp. Back to the same sleeping pillow setup, and let's add an extra decorative pillow to our color palette. This is a classic option and has a little kick from the decorative pillows. It's similar to what I did in Scott's Chicago apartment, and I think it works in a lot of scenarios. For our last option, we're gonna add a duvet. A duvet is like a sleeping bag for your comforter. It's not the easiest thing to do, but worth the effort in my opinion. I use this trick, Shara taught me actually, 
We have a video on this with other install tips in her dorm room video. I fold my duvet neatly in half and place it evenly at the foot of the bed. Then, one last fold to make it magnificent. When I see a bed that has this kind of duvet at the end, I don't know, it just, it just makes me want to crawl into it. Now, we'll pull in the colors from our color scheme with our decorative pillows. For these, I try to organize them in a way that's both stylish and structural. I even face the pillows in the direction of the door. This creates a great first impression. As you can see, these are the principles that I use in most of my projects. Yes, it does take time to follow all the steps, but even utilizing a handful can help produce a beautiful bedroom. And finally, the one that started it all. The pillow we used to select all of our bedding, wall coverings, flooring, and even the colors in the art for this project. It now sits proudly at the head of our happy, comfortable, inviting, newly made bed. Let me know which option did you like best. I'm curious to see what you guys think and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you picked up some useful bed making tips. Perhaps some things you hadn't considered before or at least if nothing else, I hope I have inspired you to make your bed. Subscribe.